I didn't help me. Uh, this is actually worse for me. I know I'm getting old. I try to tell you people I'm 75 years old. I'm not a healthy young, young dick like I used to be. But that's the way it happens when we all get old. We got to die sometime. Maybe I'll live another year or two. Maybe I'll live another five or ten. Who knows? And I'm sure going to karaoke bars where they smoke all them cigarettes. And you have people smoking in the left of you and the right of you and in front of you and the back of you. You know, uh, but uh, it's only for two hours. And now we're all here. Well, we used to live in Chicago. None of the bars in Illinois and we're over Wisconsin. We used to have close to eight miles from the Wisconsin border over in Kenosha. Uh, there's one bar up there in Kenosha at the Brat Stop. You can smoke back there in their karaoke section. It's way behind the restaurant in a separate room with fans blowing through the windows and everything. That's the only place you're allowed to smoke inside in Kenosha by Highway 50 in 94. You people live around there know what I mean. You other people around the world, you know what the hell I'm talking about. It's about 10 miles, 15 miles of my old house back in Illinois. It, it was about 8 miles to the border line, from Wisconsin line. 5 miles further to take you to the Brat Stop. German Brats. Very good too, mind you. I like Brats. I like some German food. I like German uh, potato salad. Some German food is pretty good. Anyway, I wish I had the ice cream so you can people can give me something to talk about or ask questions. But uh, if you can make a bunch of comments after you watch this video and, to, and, and put some questions there, maybe next time when I can show you a video I'll answer those questions. I'll write them down on a piece of paper so I don't forget. And when you turn 75 people, it's easy to forget a lot of stuff. But I do remember over a thousand songs, so you got to give me credit for something. And I used to be one of the best machinists around this area. I made very good money as a machinist. A lot of people, more money than most people. And I got a big profit sharing check when I retired. And uh, they kept me when the things got slow in the machine shop. I always appreciate that. And they wanted to pick the smart people and get rid of the dummies. A lot of people were older, mature, uh, and been there longer than I was at my company, a uh, Dublin company right there in Waukegan, way in the south side of Waukegan, about 15 miles south of Lake Forest, where my owner of the company is, one of the richest towns in northern Illinois, Lake Forest. He drives a 500-hour car, sport, 500,000 sports car to go to work with. He can afford it. He makes a lot of money. And he appreciates good machines like me. I'm a laid machinist. And uh, those other people, when things got slow, they sent them to the unemployment board. And Dubin, the unemployment board, is just another way is, you're fired. They never call you back. They never did anything. For 14 years I worked there, and they never called nobody back to the unemployment board. Once you're gone, you're gone. You know what they did with me? Do you know what they did with me? Here's a broom, John. A broom. B R O O M. A broom. Sweep the floor. I said, What? They said, Sweep the floor. Gosh damn it. I said, No, all right. At least I had a job. I hope you can be as good as I was if you ever entered your machine shop. And I don't recommend that you become a machinist. Nowadays, you don't have one operation, you don't have two operations, you got three operations to watch. 
two are late operations, and the third one is the uh, machining center. That drills the holes and mills spots on the piece that you're working on and other things. It drills the tap holes in different locations and mills and flats someplace on the part that you're making and a bunch of other stuff that a, mill, uh, a milling center does. And also, you have to teach a robot how to put the part in the machine and take it back out and change it between uh, from operation one and operation two on the lathes. There's a lathe over here and there's a lathe over here and there's a machining center coming in like this. Instead of 30 operations on a print that you have to watch, you have to watch 60 for two operations and 90 for three operations. Instead of seven or eight twos in the machine, you got 300 twos to put in the machine nowadays. The machines cost millions of dollars and they don't want you to crash them because it's going to cost them a lot of money to fix it. They would have a good excuse to fire your ass. Don't become machinists. There's too much to learn and they don't appreciate anything about you. Why do they have those expensive machines? Because they don't take cigarette breaks. They don't take coffee breaks. They don't take a break to go away and talk to people. They're robots. They're taking over everybody's job. All they need is a few smart people, smarter than me, to run the shop. The robots don't have to go home at night. They don't have to go and take a cigarette break. They don't have to go and take a snack break, a coffee break. They don't even have to go home on the weekend. They run all night weekends. All day. All day Saturday, all day Sunday. They work seven days a week. 24 hours a day. And you better have machine set to make good parts all weekend or you'll be looking for another job at the end of Florida and the Dublin will never call you back. Who would want a machine shop that does that? It works seven days a week, 24 hours a day. How much money can put in my, my the owner of that company's pocket right now? must be gigantic. <laughs> they got rid of the, all the old machines when they when I retired. A year later I went back there for a company picnic and um, they cleared out all my old machines. The old CNC machines. They only did one operation. Now it's a rough world people and I don't know what you guys can do for a living when the robots take over driving trucks across the United States and the world. What are all these truck drivers supposed to do to make a living then? What about the Uber drivers that come over and give you a ride because you lost your license or something or have a DUI or your insurance got so high you just couldn't afford to pay it for it anymore like me. My insurance went up a thousand dollars a year because I crashed my Accord. I made a two second mistake looking at my GPS. I should have been looking at the cars in front of me. I smashed into a Ford Taurus. Cardi caused any damage to the Taurus. The Honda, I was in the car, the 2013 the car, they told me we ain't gonna fix it. They give me a $16,000 check for a $36,000 car. That's what it cost back in 2013. It had everything in it. It was a touring sedan. Now I'm paying for the nose to drive a car. Maybe I'll need an Uber driver someday to go to karaoke bar. I only have maybe one or two drinks when I go out and drink. I want to never be caught with a DUI. I know the law here. It's strict. But uh, that's the way it is, people. You have insurance, pay for everybody else's mistakes. Then when you make a mistake, then you're going to pay up the ass. 
you're going to be paying up the ass if you ever get in an accident. So don't look at your GPS even for a split second. All it takes is a half a second of not watching the road in front of you when there's cars around you to getting into an accident. That's why I stay away from cars when I'm driving down the freeway, down city streets. I keep my distance from the other cars. And I've been driving for 55 years and never did that stupid thing before like I did a year ago at Christmas, back in 2017. Took my mind off the road for a split second and what happened? I didn't even have time to reach over and touch the brake pedal. Bam! It's a split second, just like that. That's how easy it is to get into an accident. So stay away from other cars if you want to look at your anything else besides the traffic in front of you. I'll learn the lesson the easy way, not the hard way, like old Johnny D here, paying through the nose for car insurance, $350 a month for a minimum coverage. I used to pay $400 every six months for all you the mathematicians out there, uh, 400 hours for six months and 350 hours a month for six months is a lot of difference coming out of your bank account. Yeah, they gave me a $16,000 check for a $36,000 car. And say, here you are, sucker. We're gonna sell your car to a parts place, a junk dealer, and he'll make money off that the parts in that car that it's still good. Yeah. Insurance companies just there to make money. That's all they are, just like you and I. They both need to make money. How about uh, home insurance? I've been paying home insurance since I turned 21. I'm a shit. I bought a house when I was 21 years old. I was a machinist for three years before that. I've been paying home insurance for 55 years. And I never collected one penny back from them. And I realized by now as an older person, all I'm doing is contributing to the nation's uh, insurance company to help the poor people that got their house hit by a tornado, they got a flood that destroyed their house, or uh, they have a hurricane that blew their house down. Or they had a fire that burned their house down. All the people in California. Who's going to pay for all those houses? Me and you. The, number, the ones who turn out our $1,200 a year tax insurance, whatever your house is worth. Some people pay a lot more than that. Some people pay, pay, pay less. I pay around the average. Who's gonna Who's gonna fix them houses? Up where you can get the money from? They get it from you, you suckers. How else is gonna fix it? Who's gonna fix the next car that gets an accident on the road? Everybody. But the poor driver that got an accident, he's gonna pay to the nose. He might not be able to afford to drive a car anymore. You might have to call up Uber and tell them doesn't give him a ride. I'm almost to that point now. But that's the way it goes, kids. A lot of people in Jacksonville can't afford that car. The insurance costs too much. A lot of people move down here, off of all over the world. It's nice weather here. I mean, we have more 70 degree days than any other state in the whole Union of the United States. Maybe even uh, we got as much as Hawaii. Where can you get weather like that? Because I can't brag about the weather today, it's only about 50 degrees out there. But a couple of days ago it was 75. I stood out in the balcony out there, four stories up, and looking at the pond behind me. Maybe I can show you a pond later on when I send you a video with my uh, my cell phone. And that nice pretty pond down below, and to the right you can see the kids playing in their in the field or whatever where they go out for races, about three three thousand feet away. 
It does a man-made lake, uh, just for decoration. You can't fish, you can't dive, you can't go swimming. Otherwise, they'll throw you in jail. It's just for decoration. Man-made lake behind me. And the 40, 50-foot trees behind me make as tall as my building, or some 10 feet taller. Real pretty. But who wants to spend four minutes every time you go out to come back home? Am I supposed to climb the stairs in my condition? A 75-year-old man who's weak on, on breathing? By the time I get to the second or third floor, I might be out of breath. I might fall down and drop dead right there. I could always walk down. It would take me maybe a minute or two to walk down as long as I didn't fall down and break my neck or break my hip. At least uh, it won't take too long to get out of here. I don't really like this place. Why does it have to take four minutes to go up four stories when you go up to Sarah's Tower, the Willis Tower now in Chicago, in one minute all the way up? They really made a slow elevator here. I wonder who brain thinking was that. And my wife thinks I need this one way in the top floor here because of my singing. I might disturb the neighbors. I, nobody complained yet, and I turned the TV up way up, so the computer too. It hasn't, nobody complained yet. Maybe she's right, maybe I need to be way up here above everybody else. Who knows? But for four minutes, every time you come home from the grocery store or work, or from the bar, to go up four flights of stairs, and what choice do I have? I'm 75 years old. I have to wear oxygen. The doctor said I do. I don't know. See what good it does. If it's going to make me breathe easier next week. If I wear it for 12, 14 hours a day here at home, or even when I'm sleeping, put it down. I don't need you out and be talking to you. Does it sound like I'm running out of breath to you? I don't think so. Well, anyway, people, it's been what, about 48 minutes already. Well, I'm going to let you go now and let me know if you appreciate my video with you. And uh, I'm sorry I can't afford a, a nice expensive computer with a camera built in and with a speaker built in it so you can hear me. My um, iPhone 8 does the same thing. It can send you a video and audio at the same time just like my camcorder does. My camcorder will send you a better picture though. I don't have full light on me. I don't want you to see how ugly that hospital made me. Because the stupid rules here in the United States, oh, you can't shave here, mister, with a razor and shaving cream. No, that's not allowed. What stupid rules? Now look at my face, people. Isn't that ugly? Having to put the uh, Makeup on that can't even cover the stupid red sores? What rules? Why do we have such strange rules in these hospitals? And they give you the worst food that they can ever give you just to keep you alive. How are you supposed to get well on that food when you can't even stand the taste? What kind of insurance monopoly do we have here in the USA? I hope it's sure better over you for you folks in uh, Europe or France or Italy where my grandparents came from. And I had some grandparents, of course, in Poland and France over there too, way back through the ages. I'm Italian, I'm uh, French, and I'm Polish. Three different nationalities. Oh well. Some of us have more than that. We're really a mutton. <laughs> I put the, and I Amazon, the more variety they have, the more healthy the animal. Maybe I could live to I'm 80, maybe 85. I'm trying to get my son, Brian, back interested in videos. I go on and pass my legacy on to my kids. My daughter was the only one that sang the whole family. I had three brothers and three sisters and all the kids and everything, and their spouses and everything. Lorraine was the best singer. 
When she went to high school in Gurney, close to Waukegan where we lived, you have to go to Gurney High School, which is better, of course. It's a more expensive school. Well, so we live in the part of Waukegan so far west that they had to put us in Gurney School, my kids, anyway. I never worried about that. I went to different schools when I grew up. Anyway, uh, Lorraine, over 1,200 people at the Gurney High School, she was selected as the number one singer to lead the choir. She had the best voice of the whole fan. She had a better voice than me, but you don't choose the right songs to sing if you convince her to convince the songs that you want to hear, she can do a good job for you. Of course, my son, Brian, he could do rapping songs for you guys. He lives in San Antonio, Texas. I'm trying to get him to send another video to give you guys. I need to pass my legacy on to somebody in my family. It's got to be my son or my wife or my daughter, Lorraine. Lorraine lives up in Lyle, Illinois. It's a little city, nice. A nice city to about 20 miles west of Chicago. My son lives in San Antonio. Anyway, uh, well, it's been almost 52 minutes now. So I'm going to cut off now. And do me a favor in your comments, ask me questions what you want to know about. And I'll put it, I'll write it down on a list of piece of paper. And next time I make a video for you guys. You can, you can watch it and uh, ask me questions there in those comments. And I'll try to answer every one of them. Until then, people, so long. Peace. Goodbye.